The bottom graph is one I want you to look at here. CTAs are as long as they get. Doesn't mean they're going to sell, but it means they don't have an appetite for buying more right now. Welcome to the Morning Markets and Metals with Vince Lancy, where each day he brings you the precious metals and financial news to get you ready for your day. And now, here's Vince. Good morning. I'm Vince, and this is the morning meeting. Today's conversation, we're going to look at changes in market dynamics and investigate if a bank cried uncle a couple weeks ago and how it's going to affect the markets now. Then we'll look at some news as well. But first, let's take a look at the markets, right? The dollar is up 17 at 106.28. Ten-year yields are 465, up three basis points. The S&P 500 is up 27 handles at 49.93 after a rough week. The VIX is 18.32, down 38 basis points. Gold out of nowhere, I might add, is 23.42, down $49 and on its lows of the evening. Silver is down over 4% at 2746, down 120. Copper is up 15 basis points uh, at 448. WTI is down 55 cents at 82.29. Natural gas is 175. Bitcoin is up almost 1,000 at 65 and change. Ethereum is 3,200. Platinum and Palladium are both down 2% and 1% respectively at 1006 and 924. Grains are Net down, soybean is down two cents at 11.48, and wheat is down a little bit. So basically, the grains are flat with soybean down a couple cents. Uh, but you could see the big, the big outlier in markets last night is precious metals, and uh, we're going to address that to prepare you for what could be a uh, a rough week. Uh, we discussed this over the weekend, and well. It's not something we want to be right about, but sometimes you got to deal with the bad news. Okay, so the title is Tactical Warning, at least my title is Tactical Warning, Someone Cried Uncle. Now, uh, well, okay, so so what happened was, we should just get right into it, right? Okay, so today in premium, we have geopolitical analysis from BOA, RBC, and T.S. Lombard. I'm particularly uh, enamored with the T.S. Lombard analysis uh, I'll give you a preview of that later on. And we're going to talk about something called price to perfection, which is the cried uncle thing is the same thing, believe it or not. All right. Uh, there's the front page. All these stories are related to today. Uh, well, not all of them. This is the founders uh, podcast we did called is gold headed for a rug pull. Now I'm going to, I'm going to send that to premium uh, later this morning, uh, but I put it out on Friday, I think Friday. Yeah. Uh, because I was worried about a, a down move, uh, but not the end of the end of the market. And then on Sunday we had a conversation uh, about the gold market, and the title says it all: "Who is buying if the gold funds are now selling?" And that's right, the gold funds are now selling very early in the game, but they are now selling. So let's get to what I'm talking about. Here's the premium. Here's T.S. Lombard, RBC, um, MUFG, and BOA. Nice little geopolitical stuff, something to read to catch up. Okay. Crying uncle and the market being possibly overbought are the same thing in this conversation, believe it or not. All right. So here's the running commentary. These are the notes that I wrote to myself. War, debt, inflation, and rate put rate cut potential are all known quantities, although we know that the rate cut potential has receded recently. Second point, the bullion banks, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Citibank, BOA, all outdid each other, raising targets very similarly to how they do on stocks they play catch up with. This is not; these are not bag holding uh, price target raises. Uh, they raise them at the end of the year. That's marketing, and then they raise them in March after the rally. And I do not believe that was bag holding. I believe that was them playing catch up with a big buyer that. They are, they did not have a handle on. Okay. Uh, number three, every bullion bank, ha oh, I think I just said that, right? Every bullion bank has not only raised their end of year targets, excuse my spelling, but raised their targets again since March, predicated on buying they have no control of 
nor heads up on if it's coming as the play as they play catch up to market forces. The editor is going to be fired from this uh, organization. That would be me. All right. So here's where the cry and uncle thing happens. First, let's start with this chart. The two rectangles or squares, that's December 3rd, when I'm pretty sure the Bank of International Settlements was called upon to alleviate the rally stress. This was during the Sunday night move. This was two Fridays ago when the uh, the Iranian attack started. And when this happened, you had a market run up again in sim- smaller but similar fashion. And I'm pretty sure, almost positive, the Bank of International Settlements stepped in again. Now, the first thing is, when does the BIS or any other bullion bank step in? They step in when the market's getting ahead of itself too hard and too fast. They're kind of like a market maker that slows down volatility. Now, the more conspiratorial of us, which I can be, is they keep a lid on it and drive it down. Now, this is that evening. I'm sorry. Yeah, that evening. uh, The market rallied that day. The market rallied, opened up, gapped higher, right? Kept filled the gap, kept going. And then the selling came in in orderly fashion, keeping a lid on it. And then the market went sideways. And then we re rallied. And I said, okay, this is this is kind of healthy. Well, but since then, since then, right? I was like, okay, a little bit of a smackdown, but we're still okay. But since then, macro appetite for adding to longs has diminished evidence. The bottom graph is one I want you to look at here. CTAs are as long as they get. Doesn't mean they're going to sell, but it means they don't have an appetite for buying more right now. Second, this is CTA breakdown. Now, CTAs, again, are not driving this market right now, but they are a little bit of a canary in a coal mine. On the left-hand side, it's a little smaller than I'd like it to be. On the left-hand side, for the last month, you've seen precious metals money coming in hand over fist, right? And energy you saw coming in to cover shorts, but not getting long. Well, this past two-week breakdown from March 13th, actually month breakdown from March 13th to April 12th, you saw, it's a little bit small. Let me see if I can make it bigger for you. That's the wrong way, right? You saw precious metals go from $26 billion dollars to $30 billion. That's a healthy increase. But energy went from $27 billion to $36 billion. The allocations between funds are going from metals to energy. So some of the longs are selling in gold and buying in oil. It's not the end of the world, but this is how it happens. This is, I think, more important. This is a Goldman Sachs CTA analysis frame I'm using. All we care about for these pictures are the stars, metals, star. That's at peak length. Metals, copper, at peak length. Doesn't mean it can't stay there, but it means that you're susceptible to bearish news. Metals, silver, almost at peak length. Okay, so you're looking at metals markets that are very overbought, for example, and the soft markets are... Sugar is very short. Cotton is very, you know, et cetera, et cetera, except for coffee, which is a nuts, which is a nuts on market right now. All right. So that's that. The second point, options are now being sold by macro longs back to bullion banks. Now, I won't get into the details here because it's just very wonky, but put it this way. Last week in this most recent CFTC report, the macro funds sold this rally. They sold calls. They hedged gamma. They sold futures. As I said in that other headline, they were selling into strength. They were taking profits. Who was buying then? Well, this tells you the buying was, believe it or not, bullion banks. A bullion bank or more, a bank in general, maybe another fund, but probably a bullion bank based on the CFTC data, was covering shorts into strength. Someone cried uncle on that day. Now, 
Here's the here's the aftermath of that. Gold is making new highs and the options are not making new highs. The second, the bottom line, that's volatility. The top line, that's the market price. That tells you that someone is selling calls as the market rallies. And historically, when this happens, this is very near and dear to my heart. When the market makes new highs and the options do not, that's because the smartest money in this instance is selling their options out. And who's buying the options back? Well, it's the people who sold it to them. So probably the boy banks. This is a sign of toppiness. You can make the argument that volatility is getting cheap. You might want to buy it again. That's right. I would wait for the market to sell off. That's my opinion. Next point. And this is big. Who has been driving this market? Well, there's been buying coming out of China, not just retail, not just central bank. There's been speculative buying from Shanghai that's been spilling over into the U.S. Futures buying, Shanghai Futures Exchange. China, for the first time, and they're very powerful when they do this, is clamping down. So call it capital controls, call it margin raises, but they are adjusting margin ratios and price limits for some contracts on futures. That's the first thing. The second thing is they're adjusting transaction fees for gold futures and other contracts. Now, not, not shown here, they've also limited the amount of position that you can have on futures as deliverable against the physical exchange. So Shanghai Gold Exchange, that's the physical exchange. It's like their spot market. That's their London market, if you want to look at it that way. And the futures exchange is their COMEX. And they're keeping them separate physically and they're also saying you can only accumulate so many futures for delivery on physical. So they're capping it. These are big drivers. They dampen Chinese demand. Be careful. All of this happened after someone cried uncle. Someone cried uncle. China uh, raised the requirements, uh, uh, reduced cross-asset uh, trading, and the market is now, you know, weaker. Okay, uh, even though we had a great uh, a great week last week. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a technical overview now, right? This is a Bollinger Band comment. Whenever you see these rectangles, I put these rectangles here. This rectangle implies, this rectangle implies this will happen. And it did, okay? This rectangle is different. This rectangle comes in on the way up from here to here to this yellow line. It stayed above it all the time. And when it didn't, it went below. Now we're below it five days in a row. Okay. That's not good. That's an implication that on the daily, we're going to pull back to possibly this red line. Now on the daily, that means and over the next five days, look for a pullback over the next five days. Now on the weekly, same concept. The market is well above the yellow line. It should pull back to the yellow line and hold. Okay. So the number, I had a number written down. The number, that, oh, there it is. This market is fine and should remain fine above 2291 If on this system. The next system I look at is below 2291. I want the market to hold 2200 for different reasons. So any pullback that holds above 2291 puts us on target for a new weekly high two weeks from now, but not this week. All right, so lines in the sand, there they are. There's one other thing. Last week was turning to silver. See this chart? Highest, this is the key for me, highest weekly close for silver in over a decade. I think 11 years. That market should have attracted buying out of the gate, and it did not. So if this market, if these markets, here's my first line in the sand, coming back to that. If this market does not close green on the day, then the macro pliers are no longer buying. Macro players, not pliers, right? Silver should be bought today. And if they're not on a day that they should be in, that's a warning bell. A new high on the week in silver is needed Again, to attract more buying, a downtick in open interest with lower market. That's a little bit of wonky stuff saying that. I think the macro funds are selling now. The macro funds are selling now. Gold could be down at 2291 and you're okay. 
and below 2291, then you start looking to buy dips because nothing has changed fundamentally. Nothing has changed. It's just overdone. We've had it good for a long period of time. Making sure that I'm still recording. All right, moving on to uh, market news. Here's another red flag for me, market news. The first story, gold's rise to all-time highs above 2,400 an ounce this year has captivated global markets. Big deal. That's a big deal because it's a Bloomberg story and there's nothing about it that's bearish. Tesla has cut prices by nearly $2,000. That's recessionary. Gold's going to go down in a recession, just not as much as stocks. The Federal Reserve Bank is stuck in a mode of forecasting and public communication that looks increasingly limited. The Fed is telling you they're data dependent and the data sucks. So what's their game plan? You can't be data dependent if the data is untrustworthy. That means you have to have a game plan. Look, if you tell me that you're relying on the data and the data sucks, then I need to know what you're going to do with the data. Because it's it's kind of like I'm looking at the I'm looking at the data and data is doing this. And you're saying I'm data dependent. I'm like, well, well, what are you doing with the data? Like, what can you do with shit? And that's what it is. Bitcoin having took effect on Friday, et cetera, et cetera. Geopolitics. Uh Nothing new, but there's plenty of stuff. Data on the week, nothing today. Hog Semitic, uh to my uh, Jewish brothers and sisters, and uh, hopefully you'll have a, a good holiday. Tuesday, uh, we have Flash. Wednesday, we have Durable Goods. Thursday is a big day, GDP, and Friday is another big day. So back-ended data. There's the TSM uh, TS Lombard. Uh, let's get to the markets. I have no position on. I'm long miners. I'm not long or short gold speculatively, but I did take delivery at about right here um, and significant lower and so. But anyway, just keep in mind, uh, a pullback is not a bad thing. If you want this, look, this market will be higher come November because of the election and the BRICS thing. And, you know, I think you should... Uh, uh, you subscribe if you're not a premium subscriber. You should subscribe because the the uh, this story here. I'm going to break this out for premium, and I think it's going to tell the tale that I'm trying to communicate here in a much bigger picture way. But tactically speaking, everyone be careful. I'm Vince. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this morning's markets and metals update with Vince Lancy. Brought to you each day by Miles Franklin Precious Metals. Where this week's special is junk silver for only $2.75 over spot. Junk silver is the pre-1965 dimes and quarters and one of the products where we did see premium spike in the past couple of years. So you can find out more by calling us at 833-326-4653 or emailing Arcadia at milesfranklin.com. Please note that this video is not intended as legal licensed financial trading advice and is to be used for informational purposes only. Please contact your financial advisor before making any decisions. And thanks for watching.